Ah, college. Lazy afternoons on the quad, parties, homecoming games, and too often crippling student debt. Tonight, we'll take you to a school that has none of those. In terms of class size, it's one of the smallest colleges in the country. In terms of landmass, one of the largest. For two years, around 26 of the world's brightest come to California to live in seclusion, govern their own affairs, and submit to rigorous coursework and hard labor on a working ranch. As we first reported last fall, it's an experiment in education designed to forge the leaders of tomorrow, dreamt up by an eccentric industrialist a century ago. Think your school was rigorous? Think your school had its quirks? Join us on a visit to Deep Springs. The story will continue in a moment. In the shadow of Eastern California's High Sierra, hemmed by twisting mountain passes, Deep Springs College is an oasis of green set amid a no-man's land of sagebrush and endless sky. Putting like philosophy and love into two orders. Here, students from around the world labor in the classroom and on the grounds. Where there is no football field, but there is an alfalfa field. And the syllabus includes philosophy, calculus, and pre-dawn cow milking. Uh. Student farmers grow the produce that student cooks prepare. There are student mail carriers, student mechanics, and student ranchers who drive some 300 head of cattle across a valley almost twice the size of Manhattan. Had you ever ridden a horse before you came here? Ah, like a pony ride once or twice. When we visited, Ziani Pais was one of two students assigned to work as a Deep Springs cowboy. Step on up there a little bit, Ziani. Up. There you go. You could have gone to a school with, with concerts and parties and football games. Good. Do you ever feel like you're missing out? No. <laughs> Not at all. I feel like never again in my life am I going to have an opportunity to live in a place like this. Like everybody here, Ziani was an academic all-star in high school. People back home in East L.A. found her choice of college mystifying. What did your friends say when you told them where you were going to school? Oh, they thought I was so stupid. What did they think you should have done? Taken a four-year scholarship to a real school. <laughs> was, that, was that an option? Yeah. <laughs> can, can I ask what school? Berkeley. <laughs> you had a four-year scholarship lined up to Berkeley. Yeah. You said, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to come to the desert and uh, be, a, be a cow hand. <laughs> yeah. What, what is this feeding in you? What, what are you getting out of this? At base level, you know, fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to, like, run on a horse and chase a cow, you know. But I think you, you also do genuinely learn life skills from that. I think you, you can't quit when the work gets hard, you know. Deep Springs was built on a kind of formula. Take a handful of the best and brightest, put them in the middle of nowhere, add rigorous academics, labor, and autonomy, and you'll get future leaders. It's not for everyone. A particular type of person finds all this appealing. Content practicing Brahms and bailing hay. Casual, brainy, indifferent to sleep. What else uh, typifies a Deep Spring student? We're typically pretty awkward. In the real world, we're definitely not the cool kids. What else? We're not delicate, usually. We're not usually some delicate people. <laughs> They can't be. Students are required to perform at least 20 hours of labor a week on top of a full college course load. And then we're going to grab these other pipes. Alice Owen took us through her routine maintaining irrigation lines. As we quickly learned, summer camp, this ain't. Yeah. This is significant, hard, potentially dangerous labor. When people make mistakes, inevitably, what is the consequence of that? If I can't grow a field of alfalfa, then the cows will not have anything to eat. If you can't get dinner ready on time, you have to apologize to people. And sometimes the mistakes um, are really hard to fix, or they're unfixable, and then you just have to take the weight of, well, I, I messed up really big. It seems sometimes today that colleges do everything they can to shield kids from discomfort, from hardship. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the philosophy here. No, 
It, it absolutely isn't. That's Patrick McLeish, a student here 20 years ago who was so entranced by the place, he came back to work here. When we met him, he was director of operations. If you want to finish the job before dinner, you need to put some hustle in and work a little bit harder. Why? Wait, what's the reasoning behind that? What we are doing is trying to prepare them to live lives of service. Well, the oil come out there. When they see a problem, when they see something that needs to be done, you shouldn't go looking over your shoulder for somebody else to do that. There's a self-reliance you get here. Exactly. I hope so, anyway. <laughs> Patrick was part of a motley crew of more than a dozen faculty and staff. The salary is modest compared to other schools, but food and housing are included, and many live here with their families. Some come armed with PhDs. We missed a class for Shakespeare week. Others with high school diplomas. Hit the nail. Don't hit anything else. All right, good job. Tim Gibson showed up here with his guitar six years ago after running cattle from Montana to Texas. These are some of the smartest kids in the country. Can you tell that when you're out here on the ranch? Sometimes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Switching hands, right, one hand or the other. As ranch manager, he fills a variety of roles. Among them, cowboy coach. There you go. Keep it up. These kids could go to college almost anywhere in the country. Why would you do this? One thing they have in common, almost all the students that come here, is that they're searching for something different and unique. And uh, they're really searching for a deeper meaning of life. It's a two-year school, after which students usually transfer to finish their degrees at the most selective universities. Alumni include diplomats, Pulitzer Prize winners, and famed physicists. One of the classic things that happens to students when they come here is they've been the best wherever they were, and suddenly they're with 15 other people who have also been the best. And I think that's a hard moment for students. That seems sort of more companionable. When we met her, Sarah Stickney was Deep Springs Dean. I can't imagine they're easy to teach. Oh my gosh, they're magnificent to teach. They're much better than easy, you know. Um, they have high standards, and they want a lot of attention, but not in a needy way, more like their own voraciousness and interest. Like everyone else, Stickney wasn't just teaching these students, she was part of their lives. And Liv just steps away. Not that there are many options out here. It's hard to exaggerate the remoteness of this place, but here's one indication. For years, the nearest drop point for students arriving by bus was about 50 miles away on the other side of the Nevada state line in front of a brothel. This extreme isolation formed one of the core principles for the school's founder, L.L. L. Nunn, an eccentric electricity and mining baron who believed the desert held spiritual qualities and lacked the distractions and seductions of the real world. He bought an old ranch down in this valley and in 1917 christened Deep Springs College. Nunn, whose presence here is still ubiquitous, put up money for the school, but specified the student body should be all male. It took a century, but four years ago, Deep Springs finally went co-ed. And today, men, women, everyone gets access to the free education at Deep Springs. That's right. All the students here get a full ride. I don't think you can learn about this until you're here and you're doing it. Among her many duties, Getting President here, Sue Darlington raises money from alumni needed to keep this experiment going. Does this place work if you charge tuition? No. Why not? The students are not consumers. Therefore, they are not turning around and saying, I have the right to this because I've paid for this. Everybody is getting the same deal. And that levels a certain kind of playing field. The trade-off, while other schools offer five-star amenities, here the trappings are, well, spare. A lot of colleges and universities, they, they pride themselves on their facilities and the high-tech and gym. You're laughing before I even finish the question. <laughs> yep. Uh, that description does not apply here. Does not apply here. <laughs> to describe the decor. It's worn by the sand, the wind, the people. So we prioritize that everything works and that the students also take some of the responsibility for the upkeep. Order. And they take responsibility for running the school. I don't, I don't want to vote for something that is going to like extend that power over my free time. Some rules are firm. Students at Deep Springs can't drink or, except in rare circumstances, leave this valley during the semester. 
But just about everything else comes up for exhaustive debate, then a vote in weekly student meetings that can make the U.S. Senate look efficient. Uh, when we pass things and then we don't do them, it's super depressing. I don't see that as community building. We spend our Friday nights having student body meetings. This is an opportunity to... We really do govern ourselves, and, and that can be tense. I just see that as kind of an imposing... Of but ultimately, it, it can be a really exciting space because the conversations that go on there are ones that um, have really high stakes for us. So all of those wishing to hear this amendment. Students vote on matters essential and not. Dormitory decor. The camera pointed at my face in my room. <laughs> and whether to allow 60 minutes on campus. The collective of citizens. Also, which courses are offered and what professors they want to hire. There's no way of understanding political society without Marx. And they sift through the 200 to 300 applications every year to pick the dozen or so students they'll accept for the incoming class. Handing over power and authority to, to 18 and 19 year old kids could lead to to Animal House, who could lead to Lord of the Flies. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. seem to have happened here. Yeah. Why? Why do we imagine that giving people who are becoming adults authority and power in their own lives, why do we imagine that's a bad thing? The knee-jerk answer would be life experience. <laughs> and, their, and their response here might be life experience. Right. I'm out here with an irrigation contraption. Exactly. What's your life experience? Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but from time to time, the adults have to step in. When COVID first hit the U.S., some students wanted the school to continue as usual in spite of California's lockdown. Administrators intervened, Patrick McLeish among them. Difficult conversation? It wasn't an easy one, but it was an important one. Uh, you know, defining the limits of self-governance are part of talking about what self-governance actually means at Deep Springs. And speaking of experiences not offered at State U... He's on up here. Ziani Pais was preparing for an adventure, driving cattle on horseback up a remote mountaintop for summer grazing. We were going to chase them up. We'll keep them where they need to be. We'll work long hours. <laughs> we'll read sometimes. Hey. It fell to Tim Gibson to get her ready for that journey. We talked to Ziani. She'd never been on a horse fairly before she, she got here. East how'd, LA. How'd you swing that one? <laughs> <laughs> no, she has a lot of try, a lot of determination. She has a lot of desire, and that's what it takes. When these kids go off to Harvard and Yale, yeah. what can they bring with them that they learned on the ranch? Work ethic, diligence, responsibility. Skills that will transfer when the students transfer as well. Taught as they are by Socrates, Shakespeare, One glad morning when and singing cowboys. Black. Black. I'll fly away. 